Alright guys, let's continue our exploration of Django and HTMX in this video and in this video we're going to learn about a new HTMX attribute and that's the HX indicator attribute. Now the reason we might need this attribute is that when we are searching over the contacts that we have on this page, for example for Stanton Mick, while that request is in flight we want to show some feedback to the user and that could be for example a spinner. And it turns out that HTMX has a helpful attribute for these scenarios and that's the HX indicator attribute. Now what this allows you to do is specify the element that will have the HTMX request class added to it for the duration of the HTTP request. And you can then show spinners and progress bars while that request is in flight by using this mechanism. Now we've been using Daisy UI in this project and there's a page in the docs for loading components such as spinners. And if you're following along you can pick any one of these that are available. What I'm going to do is go down to one and that's this one here where we have a loading spinner with different colours. We can go to the HTML for that and I want to use the success colour because that's going to match what we have in this header here. You can see the colour there and that's the text success class in Tailwind. So let's copy this line of code here and it's a span with the loading class from Daisy UI and loading spinner and text success. We can then go to VS Code and what I'm going to do in the templates directory within the partials directory here is create a new file and that's going to be called spinner.html. We can then paste in the code that we got from the documentation. And what I'm going to do is add a couple of extra attributes here. Now we're going to add an ID and I'm going to give this an ID of spinner and that is going to allow us to easily reference this in the HX indicator attribute from HTMX. And I'm also going to add another class here so let me split this into new lines. We're going to add one more class and that's HTMX indicator. Now if you're wondering what that class is I'm going to go back to the documentation and you can see that that class has been added here as well and that's on an image with an ID of spinner. But this line of text here in the documentation will tell us that the HTMX indicator class is going to define an opacity transition when it shows the spinner. And you can see the CSS for that just below here. Let's now go back to VS Code. So we have a span and that is going to define our spinner. And we've encapsulated that in a partial template. What we can now do is go to the parent template and that's contacts.html. And this input box here is the search bar. That's what contains our HTMX attributes to trigger the GET request and perform the search. Now what we can do while the search is in flight is we can use this HX indicator attribute and we're going to set that to the ID of that spinner that we've now got here in this partial template. And of course we need to include that partial template. I'm going to do that just below the SVG here. So let's go down below here and just before the end of the label we can use Django's include template tag and we're going to reference partials slash spinner .html. Now if we save this and go back to our application here and refresh this page, you can see that it looks the same as before pretty much, but when we perform a search, we don't see any spinners at the moment. Now what we're going to do is introduce some artificial latency here in Django. So let's go back to views.py and this is the Django view that handles that HTMX search request. What I'm going to do in this view is import Python's time module and we're just going to call time.sleep for two seconds and let's imagine that's going to simulate some latency in the server before we actually return the search results. So now that we've added that we can go back here and I'm going to perform another search here and notice on the right hand side we get the search bar appearing on the right hand side of that input element. So every time we perform the search it's going to be around two seconds before we get the response and while we're waiting for that we're going to see the spinner at the right hand side and when we get the response that disappears. Now in terms of placement of the spinner you could do this anywhere on the page. You could even blur out the background here and have the spinner right in the centre of the page. We're just going to keep it on the search bar as you can see here but now the user gets some feedback when they actually perform the search. They know that something is going on, some kind of processing in the background and that is essentially what the purpose of HX indicator is, just to show that feedback to the user. Now just for fun we can also use the HX on attribute and that can be used to perform some light scripting on the page, for example in between the request being sent and the response being received. So let's go back to our template and this is the input that contains all of our HTMX attributes. We're now going to reference a custom HTMX event and that's HX on and we're going to use before request. So this is an event that's going to be triggered before the request is sent to the server and we can perform some scripting here for example by using JavaScript such as get element by ID. And what I'm going to do is grab this table that contains our contacts and let's change the opacity of that table and decrease that while the request is in flight. Now the contact table or the contact list has an ID of contacts-list 
And of course that comes from contact list.html. It's this div here that surrounds the table. So we're going to target that element here using document.getElementById. And then when we retrieve that element, we can access the .style property and we can set the opacity to something else, for example, 0.4. So basically just before HTMX sends the request, it's going to set the opacity of that table to 0.4. I'm going to copy this line of code down below here and let me remove this tag at the end. What we're also going to add is HTMX after request. So this is another event that HTMX provides. So when the response is received, we can change the opacity back to 1.0 here, and that's going to make that fully visible on the page. So let's save this, and we're going to go back to the application, and we're going to see if this works. Let's refresh the page, and this time when we search for Stanton Mick, notice that we have this icon at the right, but the blurring effect doesn't seem to be working. Now let me go back to VS Code here, and we're going to try and find out what's going on. And the problem here is that the selector does not need the hash when you use get element by ID. So all we need to do is provide the ID here. We don't need that hash for the CSS ID selector. If we now save this and go back to the page, let's refresh the page again and search for Stanton Mick. And notice that the opacity of the table is reduced while the request is in flight. So now we have this kind of nice active search going on here. When the request is in flight, we see the spinner and the table is greyed out. And that applies every time we perform the search. We're going to move on in the next video and we're going to look at building functionality to actually add new contacts to the existing table that we see here. So that is going to be a common operation. We have a contact list, but we want to add a new contact to that list. We're going to build out the form for doing that in the next video.